the chest drain insertion uh, needs a certain equipment uh, as i uh, explained in my video on supportive care you need to be always ready to manage air leaks in the unit so make sure your supply kit includes the necessary equipment the underwater seal the connectors as needed the trocar and catheter or the pigtail catheter whichever you may use cleaning agents uh, a small nick on the skin will be needed if you are using either the trocar or the pigtail uh, because uh, you can't really go through the skin uh, unless you make that nick you can dilate with the artery forceps to make it easier to dissect through uh, the shoulder roll will help us slightly tilt the chest upward uh, the direction of the chest drain should be always going anterior so when you insert the uh, chest drain in direct it anteriorly if you are using the artery forceps to direct in hold it in such a way that the bevel edges up so that uh, it goes anteriorly a chest drain going posteriorly is one of the reasons why the lung may compress on it and may not uh, drain subsequently so this is the uh, fourth uh, intercostal space in the uh, mid clavicular line you make about 0.5 cm small nick you can widen it uh, with the blunt dissection and you can either go up to the pleural space or you go up to the uh, muscle layer widen it a little bit so the insertion itself you don't need to use much force especially on the left side remember that if uh, you are using force you have a chance of going up to the heart uh, so be careful to do this blunt dissection and uh, use the you do not use a trocar if on the left side just a change over to the uh, drain catching on to the Uh, artery forceps like it is shown here once a blunt in dissection is done you direct it uh, rotate it upwards so the cannula goes uh, the drain goes upwards anteriorly and uh, you insert it till you hear a pop uh, insert it 2 to 3 cm in a premature baby and 3 uh, to 4 cm in a term baby uh, better to be on the lower side but uh, keep in a at least 2 cm inside so it doesn't pull out uh, this tie is optional if you are going to secure it well but if it's a la, the baby with a tension pneumothorax you don't want to risk the drain coming out so a small stitch uh, with the purse string kind of fixing and then the tape on top of it is better um, by the time this is inserted you would have the underwater seal connected if you don't have the underwater seal uh, immediately you can get the hemlick valve to connect uh, or a three way tap can be connected uh, so this is uh, the pigtail catheter many of you might have used it but uh, it's uh, mo slightly more expensive but it is gentler uh, there are some units who like it some who don't like it and both systems are okay but again if you are using the trocar uh, remove the needle and use the blunt dissection approach uh, especially if you are on the left side uh, so that there is no risk of uh, puncturing the heart or anything like that in some units it's a pediatric surgeon who inserts a chest drain but in most uh, units a neonatology team is uh, privileged to do that and uh, the pigtail catheter uses the kind of seldinger approach uh, so you have a very soft catheter you have the guide wire uh, which uh, goes through that first you uh, make a small nick on the skin then you uh, insert the uh, dilator and then uh, over the dilator the guide wire is threaded in and through the guide wire the pigtail catheter is threaded in it looks complicated but once you start doing it a couple of times it's straightforward the only precaution you have to take is the guide wire is springy and coily so make sure it doesn't contaminate the sterile field the way you hold it uh, you it's better to have an assistant with you and uh, the underwater seal there are different types a simple water bottle uh, a distilled water uh, containing a bottle with the adapter is adequate in most cases you have one end which is uh, connected to the chest drain set and the other end is either left open to the air or you connect a negative section through that one tip to remember here if you are stopping the negative section you have to remove that uh, tube out otherwise the air cannot come out to the external surface so please uh, remind the team of this so this is how it looks like the uh, chest drain connects to this tubing which is immersed in the water the air bubbles through by immersing it in water you are avoiding a reverse flow of air into the chest so uh, when the negative pressure in the chest increases air can be sucked in through there so you are avoiding that and uh, this is opening either to the exterior or you connect this to a suction the suction should be gentle 5 to 10 uh, 
millimeter mercury or I mean uh, 5 to 10 uh, suction pressure uh, don't uh, exceed that because it can lead to lung collapse as well and uh, try to stop the suction once the bubbling stops uh, there may be some bubbling continuing as long as you have the suction but once you stop the suction the air leak is encouraged to close so keeping the suction on more than needed is not ideal because it may uh, reduce the healing rate and the first step if you have started suction stop the suction uh, confirm that the baby is stable you don't need a repeat x-ray at this stage you only need to check the baby clinically if any desaturation or rise in oxygen requirement or increased retractions that means that you need to restart the suction and wait more uh, once the suction is stopped successfully you look at clamping the chest drain so clamping the chest drain you, if you have a three-way tap connected you can just close the three-way tap or if you don't have a three-way tap you cl clamp uh, the tube with an artery forceps and once the clamping is done uh, you wait for at least two to four hours some units wait longer uh, and you repeat an x-ray before you actually remove the chest drain as I've mentioned at the beginning, the intubation of the baby is not directly linked to this. So if your baby is extubatable before that, you don't need to keep the baby intubated just because the baby needs a chest drain to stay. And again, removing the mechanical ventilation, keeping it on non-invasive mode may actually help uh, the pneumothorax to close uh, and heal quicker. So unless the baby is clinically unstable, you don't need to continue mechanical ventilation. The last few cases with pneumothorax, we managed, we extubated the baby by uh, 24 hours. The chest drain was removed the following day when they were on non-invasive ventilation. So just to recap again, the negative pressure, uh, the chest drain is connected to the underwater seal and you consider adding negative uh, pre suction pressure of minus 5 to minus 10 centimeter of water. Uh, and you first stop the negative suction, then you clamp the drain and you repeat the chest x-ray before you remove. Uh, if there is worsening clinically, even before you do the x-ray, you don't need an x-ray, you just reopen the drain and wait. Uh, how long you wait depends on the case. Uh, some cases do get into a bronchopleural fistula stage where you need to be really patient and you have to educate the family that it is going to take time to heal. Uh, once it's removed, you don't really need a stitch, just some sterile strips to cover the small wound should be adequate.